Can you remember, like, from this picture to that picture? Oh, it what was happened? a long time. Well, no, see, I was in, we were still living in Winthrop there. Yeah, I know. And then this is after I got moved to Warren, and I had that stupid stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Emotion. You can see it on Marvin's face. A smile, a laugh, a scowl of frustration. But what he does not experience is the awareness of emotion. Emotions are generated by structures hidden deep in the brain. The tiny almond-shaped amygdala is the first to respond to an emotional event, triggering a series of split-second reactions within the brain's emotional core. Waves of nerve impulses travel down the brainstem, setting off an instantaneous visceral response throughout the body. A lot of the time, the machinery that produces the emotion is operating without us noticing it at all, creating changes in posture, facial expression, altering the way the organs inside the body are working, preparing the body for what's needed next, generating chemical responses that you will never know existed. And all of this is what constitutes the emotional state. For most people, awareness of a feeling follows just milliseconds after an emotion is created. The body sends signals back to the area of the brain responsible for conscious thought, making us aware of our feelings. It is in this region of emotional awareness that Marvin's stroke decimated hundreds of millions of brain cells. Marvin experiences emotion, his body responds. But when the physical response is communicated back to his thinking brain, the signal falls into a void. Marvin can only guess at what he or others may be feeling. When you're married, there's an emotional connection between two people. That connection is no longer there. It's like somebody cut that wire between the two of us. If I try and talk to him, you know, about something that's bothering me, or um, well, I just need somebody to listen. He's just not there for me. There's no empathy or sympathy. He just can't get that feeling. And he knows it should come, but it just won't. This is the Chamonix Valley in the French Alps. Avalanche paths are evident all around. In the past, Before the stroke, Marvin was a successful salesman selling plumbing supplies throughout Iowa. But he hasn't been able to work in 23 years. He was very ambitious, driven. No, he doesn't really want to make any decisions as far as anything important, you know. I couldn't make decisions like I thought I should, and I probably wouldn't, you know, make a decision about different things. I probably would have screwed myself up, because I didn't, when it wasn't for Arlene, we wouldn't be where we're at, because I didn't make, you know, proper business decisions on the house and any, any bills or anything like that, because I just wasn't able to make decisions. Marvin has trouble deciding because he has lost the emotional connection to his past. Memories and the emotions that go with them guide our every decision. But for Marvin, memories are bereft of feeling. All the things that you go through in your life in terms of decisions are inevitably accompanied by some kind of emotion, positive or negative. Each decision has some kind of similarity with a decision of the past. And when you are in a position to decide once again, you will call up an emotional memory that will appear as a gut feeling and will lead you in one direction or another. So what you have is a, literally 
a navigational aid, something that helps you get to the right decision. And if that is broken down, then you're at the mercy of facts and logic, and that's just not good enough. Marvin is rudderless as he navigates through daily life. But, um, I'm not an invalid, I'm not, uh, I'm not, some days probably people probably think I am, but I'm not, you know, I'm, not, I'm able to do a lot of things. I give everything up to have him back emotionally. Okay. Yeah. We care about each other, you know, and I always love him, but I just miss the old Marvin. There's an old idea that emotion is not at all a good thing because it is difficult to control. But emotion is extremely useful. Emotion is not a luxury. Emotion is part and parcel of the mechanisms that allow us to stay alive. Feelings seem intangible intensely subjective. But now, using new imaging technologies, scientists have demonstrated that emotions have a physical place in the brain. Anger. Happiness. Sadness. Fear. Sometimes intense, often fleeting, each has a specific neural circuitry that has evolved over millions of years. Why do we have these emotional states? What are they for? Well, they all serve a purpose. They're all adaptive. By having a feeling of emotion, you have a possibility of taking into account what happened and using that for the proper planning of future actions. If something caused happiness because it was something that was potentially good for you, having that feeling is going to help you organize your planning around the possibility of getting some more of that good thing that you had. Even emotions that are disturbing, like anger or fear, have their purpose. No one's life is free from stress, and when those stresses occur or problems arise, we have specific emotions that are part of our repertoire for a reason, because they help us solve those important problems. Anger, for example, is a constellation, a package of brain responses that facilitates our ability to remove obstacles that are in the way of important goals. With fear, the essential thing is to place the organism out of danger. So, for instance, an animal can rapidly flee from the predator or freeze. And so the experience of certain kinds of negative emotions are absolutely necessary and appropriate. Where problems arise uh, is when an emotion persists for a much longer duration of time uh, than it normally would. 